So gameplay footage just got released for Monster Hunter Rise, and you guys already know I had to jump on covering this immediately. So without further ado, let's take a look at this gameplay and see if we can't figure out how this new web slinging mechanic works in and out of combat, as well as what's been added into Rise since World, and what won't be returning in Rise that was present in past Monster Hunters. First, let's take a look at how the wire bug works out of combat. Obviously enough, the wire bug mechanic is mapped to the ZR button on the Switch, so to become Spider-Man we just gotta tap that like crazy. Just like in my previous video on Rise, I was right about the wire bug having a cooldown function. Down below you can see that the wire bug has two uses available, and after bringing out the wire bug, the gauge goes down by one. Simple enough, right? But wait a minute, he just web slinged three times with two gauges, how did he do that? Okay, so I think how this works is that when you're on the ground, the initial use of the wire bug can get you into the air. However, the next swing immediately afterward does not affect the wire bug gauge. Alternatively, once you're in the air, you can also hold the ZR button to just chill out and just hang there. But if you hang for long enough, you'll lose all your momentum and have to drop straight down to the ground. But if you use that momentum to swing forward instead of just hanging there, you can then go into your second wire bug use. After this, we see him hold the ZR button again, but this time he hangs for a moment, and then must hold back on the analog stick in order to flip backward and change directions. So it seems like a maximum of four swings of the wire bug is allowed when you use the wire bug gauge to the best of its ability with two uses available. I can't stress enough how much I already love how this was designed. With this much complexity outside of combat, the maneuverability allowed for exploration reaches a whole new level with this monster hunter. And that's not even mentioning all the different options that you can use the wirebug for while in combat. I'm hoping that the better gear you obtain, the more the wirebug uses can increase. I definitely think there will be armor sets with skills that quicken the wirebug cooldowns or increase the amount of usages available to you. You can also collect wire bugs out in the field to give yourself more usages, but anything collected past two wire bugs will only be a one-time use. Okay, let's get into the different ways you can use the wire bug during combat. Looking at all these options in my notes literally gets me hyped. So for the first one, there's a wire bug counter that exists that looks exactly like the adept dodge from Monster Hunter Generations and the counter is performed very similarly to the Adept Dodge as well. When throwing the wire bug out at the last second before a monster attack connects, the dodge is performed, allowing you to retaliate swiftly. The counter does consume a wire bug use, so you can't just be throwing it out willy-nilly. Another use is where the wire bug is pretty much a sticky bomb. The wire can be thrown out and attached to the monster's head, where it stays for a time before exploding. If there are two gauges of the wire bug available for you to use, a powerful special attack can be performed that consumes both of those gauges. Looks pretty flashy, and I am a fan of flashy attacks. The wire bug can also be used to perform a yukimi when you're sent tumbling by a monster, which, thank god, this was included. No more getting stuck in a fighting game combo by Furious Rajang for me. Oh no, he grabbed me, he grabbed me. Ooh, ooh. Ah! Oh my god, I'm gonna... <laughs> also, the wire bug can be used to speed up your momentum on the ground, not just to get in the air. If you ever need that extra burst of speed to get out of the way of a monster attack, the wire bug's got you covered. So the wire bug can be used evasively as well as offensively. This tool is just so freaking versatile. However, you can also be punished for using the wire bug as well. If you use the wire bug to web sling while your weapon is unsheathed, your character seems to get stuck in place for a little bit before being able to move again. The wire bug can also be used to attach to the monster, sling toward it, then vault off and perform what I can only assume is a mounting attack afterward. This was performed with the longsword specifically though, so I assume that move was unique to the longsword only. The only extensive gameplay footage we've seen so far of Rise was for the longsword and dual blades, and again, I'm sure the other weapons have different wire bug counter animations, special attacks, and many other different maneuvers that can be performed with the wire bug. 
Other than that though, I don't have much else to say about the Wirebug, other than that it looks awesome. There are minor differences between other Monster Hunters that I noticed though. Paintballs will not be making a return in this game, and to that I say good riddance. Instead, you can send out a scouting owl that will reveal miscellaneous locations and scout out different types of monsters on the map. Question marks on the map are undiscovered monsters, so I assume part of the fun will be running to a question mark, hoping that unknown monster is the one that you're currently targeting. Damage numbers are here to stay, and I'm pretty indifferent about them being here. I guess they're just nice to have to be like, oh my god, I just did friggin' 3000 damage to a monster, but either way, it's not a pro or a con for me. The tent introduced in Monster Hunter World will also make a return in Rise. I do wonder if fast travel camps will be included in Rise, but I doubt it, since the wolf seems to make it pretty fast to traverse through the terrain already, and that combined with the wirebug, as well as bigger, more open areas that Rise's maps have, makes me think that fast travel camps won't be included here. And finally, move sets that were added to World in the Iceborne expansion are here to stay in Rise. It's also been confirmed that Rise will have no loading screens between areas, as if that wasn't apparent enough by the gameplay, but it is nice to have that confirmed. One fact that I found interesting about Monster Hunter Rise is that it's been built using the Resident Evil engine, which was also used to make RE7 and RE2 Remake. At least there won't be any zombies to jump scare me in this one. Free content will be released post-launch, and Rise will be supported similarly to World's free updates and additional DLC, which is always good to hear. And perhaps the best news, the developers will be focusing on a wide variety of monster types this time around, after fans were disappointed by the lack of monster variety in World. It really looks like this Monster Hunter entry is truly stacking up to be one of the greats. But now, it's time to hear from you guys. What did you all think about the gameplay reveal for Monster Hunter Rise? Which weapon are you maining? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm sticking to the tried and true greatsword. It's never let me down. By the way guys, if you enjoy watching Monster Hunter live streams, I'm live on Twitch pretty much every weekday, streaming games like Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, World, and Final Fantasy XIV, so if you're into that, make sure to check out the link in the description to catch me live sometime. Also guys, don't forget to slap that like button if you enjoyed this video, and make sure to subscribe for more Monster Hunter related content in the future. Otherwise, Monster Hunter Rise is gonna be more like, uh, guys I can't say it this time, the game looks too good.